In 2018, Intel introduced Thermal Velocity Boost along with the Core i9-8950HK flagship mobile processor. Thermal Velocity Boost opportunistically increases the clock frequency above the Turbo Boost 2.0 maximum ratios, uh, depending on how much the CPU temperature is below the maximum temperature. The frequency gain and duration depends on the workload, the capabilities of the processor, and the processor cooling solution. With the introduction of Intel cryocooling technology in 2020, Intel also opened up the TVB configuration to motherboard vendors and end users. Obviously, with cryocooling technology, we have a lot more thermal headroom to play with to hopefully maximize our overclock and performance gains. You can use either XTU or, on motherboards that support it, configure thermal velocity boost from the BIOS. The easiest way to understand the thermal velocity boost configuration is by going from top ratio to bottom ratio. The first column lists the count of active cores going from one active core to eight active cores with the 11900K. The second column describes the maximum possible ratio for a particular count of active cores. So in this example, the maximum ratio for one core active is 56 and the maximum ratio for eight cores active is 53. Since we keep a fixed base clock frequency of 100 megahertz, this results in respectively 5.6 GHz and 5.3 GHz. The third column describes the first temperature offset point. When the CPU exceeds this temperature, it will decrease the ratio of the CPU. In my example, when four cores are active and the CPU temperature exceeds 64 degrees, then the CPU will decrease the ratio. Similarly, when the temperature exceeds 52 degrees and eight cores are active, the CPU will also decrease the frequency. The fourth column describes the ratio offset for the temperature configured in the third column. So when the CPU temperature exceeds 64 degrees and four cores are active, the ratio will decrease by one. 54 minus one equals 53. So the CPU will run the four cores at 5.3 gigahertz. The fifth column is an additional temperature offset point. The function is the same as the first temperature offset point. While on Comet Lake, the ratio offset for temperature B was fixed to one, on Rocket Lake, it is also now configurable. So in my case, when two cores are active, the frequency will be 5.6 gigahertz. However, if the CPU temperature exceeds 20 degrees, then the frequency will be 5.5 gigahertz. And if the temperature exceeds 45 degrees, then the frequency will be 5.5 gigahertz. As you can see, OCTVB on Rocket Lake still uses the bi-core usage method to set the CPU ratio. However, we also know that for Rocket Lake, there's this new feature called per core ratio limit. From testing with different tools, it appears that OCTVB also supports per core ratio offsets. The way it negotiates which ratio offsets to apply in a given situation is to pick whichever is worse. The ratio offset as determined by the by core usage or the per core ratio limit offset. The functionality to set OCDVB on a per core ratio limit basis is not exposed in the Intel documentation and is unlikely to end up in any BIOS. But who knows, maybe we'll see it pop up in the future. Okay, back to the BIOS.